it's Tanya Carvello again from Ball Four Plant Selective One North America. And it's Friday, August 13th, and I am here at Toronto Botanical Gardens. We were shooting a live video this morning, uh, a live interactive video. It was so much fun. And we realized, you know what, we'll do one more while I'm here that we can post so we can share with everybody that couldn't be on the live interactive video this morning. So I'm gonna start off on this pathway on the right-hand side of the greenhouse. We're starting off with a Beacon and Patient bed. Beacon and Patients are an introduction from Pan American Seed. This is our downy mildew resistant in patients. In this bed, we only featured three colors this year, but there are more colors um, available. We have salmon, rose, and white. And you can he see here clearly in this bed with the um, insane humidity and heat we've had here in Southern Ontario this year that there is no mildew in this bed and these Beacon and Patients are just thriving. Absolutely beautiful. Beacon and Patients are back and you are good to go ahead and purchase with confidence at your garden center. In this next bed, I call this the Sky Garden. We have a center focal piece, which is the Archangel Angelonia. I put three colors in this bed. I put the dark purple, the blue bicolor, and the white as a center focal for this bed. We then surrounded the Angelonias with our new for 2021 main stage Glacier Sky Petunias. This is a sky type petunia with a white pickety edging, which just makes it pop. The actual shape of the bloom is that of a star as well as the bloom goes into points. So it actually looks like a star. And then we edged the outer circle of this bed with a brand new Verbena series coming to the market for 2022. This is called Beats Verbena. We have it available in a couple of bi colors. We have a red, we have a blue, but in this bed, I decided to feature the white. This is an early Verbena, a mounded compact habit Verbena. It'll stay much more controlled as you can see in these mounds. Um, typically on a Verbena, you'll get shoots or leg type um, arms coming off with blooms on the end. This stays much denser, much more compact. So this is um, the Sky Garden, I call it again, with Archangel Angelonia, Main Stage Glacier Sky, and Beats Verbena. I'm then gonna make my way over to this big pollinator garden. So in this pollinator garden this morning, um, I'm going to show you, we decided to do a backdrop. We have a lot of photographers here this morning at Toronto Botanical Gardens. They are trying to capture the hummingbird, um, male and female that are, are diving down to feast on these salvias. In this bed, we have the Roman red salvia from Ball Four Plant. This is a very fragrant salvia. Um, very bright, bright red color. It's gorgeous and the hummingbirds feel the same way I do. They're, they're definitely feasting down here this morning. In front of this backdrop of salvia, I featured a new for 2022 um, Shamrock Lantana. Lantana, of course, is not new to the marketplace, but this variety is. This is a very mounded Lantana. So you can see it's not crawling along the um, garden. It's not shooting up with different arms. It's staying in a controlled ball. There is a white, a rose, a peach, and an orange. I have this in, in my containers at my home and I have it mixed with different petunias, um, caliber coas. It's performing beautifully. I'm very, very happy with it. This white is so clear. The bi colors on the rose and the peach are gorgeous. Big, big pollinator plant. Bumblebees, butterflies, love, love, love lantana. Also, it is um, heat and drought tolerant. So fantastic for anyone who travels or goes away to a cottage property or something in the summer. This is a plant that will thrive for you in your home. Next in front of the Shamrock Lantanas, I featured the Bees Knees Petunia. The Bees Knees Petunia is a 2021 introduction. It is a AAS winner, all American selections. This is a very vibrant yellow petunia. Um, as you can see, <clears throat> the core of the bloom stays very, very dark yellow and it fades into a slightly softer edging. Has great vigor. It can fill a garden bed, a large container, large basket. Mixes well with other plants as well. 
um, really adds a lot of punch to this garden and really makes it pop with the yellow. In the front of this garden bed, I instead of featuring potato vine or ipomea, I chose to go with the Salsa Verde Flamethrower Coleus. This is a sun or shade coleus. It stays very mounded in a fall type of habit, so it doesn't take over the other um, plant material that's in the bed. It does the same in a mixed container. If you put a flamethrower into your mixed containers, your planters or your hanging baskets, it's going to stay very controlled. It's not going to take over like we would see um, a potato vine typically do in a big town basket, you know, where they're trailing onto the road. These stay nice and controlled and blend very, very nicely with the other components in your garden or your containers. So that's it for this big container, uh, sorry, pollinator garden. Next, I want to go in front of the greenhouse here and showcase some of the dahlias we have featured in this bed. There are two big introductions in this bed for 2022. We have my favorite, which is the City Lights Neon. City Lights is our medium bodied dahlia, medium vigor, but on a very dark, dark, rich foliage, almost a black. And then it just pops with this neon color that matches my nail polish, um, bloom. Large double blooms. And I think that color is just so enhanced on the dark foliage, absolutely gorgeous dahlia. Right next to it, we have another new introduction for 2022. This is City Lights Orange. And again, on the dark, dark foliage, it really pops. Medium bodied plant, just beautiful. You can see the difference between a City Lights foliage, which is really dark, next to a Delea series, which is the pink and lemon, and has the green foliage. Big contrast. So in this garden, um, we have all different series of dahlias. We have Ventes, which are our largest, most vigorous dahlias in the back. We then move into Delayas. There's purple and white, um, which is a green foliage on a medium bodied dahlia. Then we have City Lights. And in the very front, we put a few of our Dahliettas, which are our more compact dahlia series. I'm gonna move into the coleus bed behind us here. So this is the new coleus bed um, for 2022, and we chose to go with a backdrop of again a salvia just because the, the bumblebees are everywhere. There's hundreds of them in here this morning. Um, and the hummingbirds as well love the salvias. This is purple and bloom from Ball Floor Plant. Vibrant purple blooms. This has great vigor for a garden bed or a very large container. It looks good all by itself, doesn't even need any other components. And then as you move forward in this bed, I've placed the four new coleus introductions from Ball Floor Plant. The darker chocolate brown coleus with the serrated edge in the back is called Lime Wire. It's got the largest body, largest vigor out of the new coleus introductions. And then in front of that, we have new Vulcan, which is probably one of my favorites. It has a rich burgundy with an electric pink veining. Um, again, chartreuse, scalloped edge, just beautiful. In front of that, we have Copperhead. Copperhead just won a um, Retailer's Choice Award at Cultivate, which is a large horticultural trade show in Columbus, Ohio. It's a rusted um, burgundy color with a chartreuse edging. And then the very front, this is Spitfire Coleus. This is a new introduction for ball floor plant in our first time introducing a micro coleus with these beautiful serrated frond type um, foliage. It's so dense, but extremely compact. So this is one plant in the garden bed here, and this is about as big as it's going to get a single plant. So if you put this in a small container or a smaller hanging basket, it's going to get to be about this size finished. That's it, no bigger, but gorgeous hot pink color on this. Next, we'll come around the bend. And on my left, on the bend of the greenhouse, we have zesty zinnias. Zesty zinnias are a Pan American seed item. Here you have large double blooms on these zinnias, vibrant colors. This is a summer item. You can see here by the height and the vigor, how they fill out. You get these big, beautiful blooms right through the summer. Gorgeous color, high impact. Um, the purple is probably my favorite, absolutely beautiful. A nice sunny spot in your, in your garden bed or in a container. And then as we come 
through, this is probably my ta-da area. This is where I'm happiest right now. This is our foliage kind of center court area. Here we have these um, metal rings on the ground. And when designing this area, we decided to put the larger types of coleus, the larger, bigger coleus in the big rings, medium, bigger coleus in the medium rings, and then down into the more compact series in our smaller rings. But you can see that we don't need blooms to have impact. This is high, high impact color. This is zero maintenance for the home gardener and it's sun or shade. All these coleus out here can tolerate full sun, full shade, or apparently they are happiest with a little bit of both. So I'm going to walk through a couple of the different varieties that we have. This is Inferno coleus. This is um, a very touchable plant. I love to touch this plant. Um, it's what I would imagine dinosaur, dinosaur alligator skin to feel like. Um, gorgeous, rich orange burgundy color. This one in the large metal ring is called Dragonheart. This is an award-winning coleus, an introduction um, for last year. Love it. That hot pink just pops off the chartreuse green. Beautiful. Indian Summer. This is almost like a camouflage. You've got greens, burgundies, almost looks like somebody just went crazy with a paintbrush and splattered it all. Behind me, we have Campfire Coleus, very rich orange with a burgundy center. It actually looks like a campfire there in a cauldron. Around this tree, we have the Trusty Rusty, um, gorgeous large foliage with a rust colored center. In the back, behind our trial garden signage that Jenny put up a week ago, this is beautiful to see where you can see the layout of the trial gardens. In front of that, we have French Quarter Coleus. This is our largest, most robust, biggest coleus. It's a dream for landscapers. This is what they get when they plant large, massive color, large foliage. Um, it just pops beautifully. Behind me we have, or beside me here, we have electric lime. Electric lime is very, very vibrant. Um, you can see there's no flowers for me to pinch off today, but if you do get flowers on your coleus and you like them, you can leave them. If you want your plant to continue to take up the nutrients and not just feed that bloom, you can pinch away and uh, deadhead your coleus. This is redhead. This is kind of the showpiece in this garden. As you come around the corner, you can see it from every angle gorgeous rich red coleus in our biggest cauldron circle here just beautiful this one i love as well just because it's so vibrant with the pink this is heartbreaker coleus this was an introduction last year um medium bigger vibrant pink this is great fall color um, in a medium sized coleus then i'm going to pop over here We've got henna coleus, which is rust with the chartreuse on top and the rust color popping through on the bottom. Wasabi. Wasabi is another solid chartreuse, but this is bigger than the electric lime. This has got some beef to it. It's got some bigger because he's kind of eating my vino coleus, which is in the back here. He's kind of taking over. Now, if I wanted to um, come in and just pinch this guy, and let more light hit the vino, you would see more of the vino pop through. And with the coleus, you can just pack away and it'll bounce right back. You can't even tell that I'm pinching it, but at least I'm getting more light into the center. And I need to pick that up after. <laughs> um, last, I want to show this raised bed area. I absolutely love how this turned out. It turned out exactly as we envisioned when we planned it. Um, we created not only a wall of black and green with the solar tower Ipomia climbing those trellises, but it also created a carpet. Just beautiful. We added the sunny yellow Thumbergia as a punch, a little pop of yellow. It looks fantastic. You'll have to let me know what you think of this wall because I'm, I'm loving it. Every week I come back, it's just fuller. And then in the two raised beds in front of the Ipomia. We decided to go with big bounce and patience here on my left and the standard bounce um, on my right. So the big bounce, you can see the size clearly here. These have more vigor, 
Um, they're taller, more robust plants. And as the name suggests, as these plants wilt down, you go away on holiday, um, you go away for work for a few days, you come back, no one has watered your garden, they're wilted, they're to the ground, you think your garden is lost, you water it and they bounce back. They'll come right back like they were before you left. And same goes for the regular bounce. Um, they're just a much more controlled habit, better for containers, smaller gardens, and um, they come in a plethora of colors. We've just included um, the lavender and the white over here today. But I hope you enjoyed your tour with us this morning and um, have a fantastic weekend.